Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will be continuing where we left off in part 1 where I showed you how to create the cubes, um, export, the, export the igloo and do some work in Houdini to soften the edges, to blend in all these corners and then re-export them back to Maya. And today we will be doing the scene layout, so positioning the other igloos here and there and obviously doing the shading and then the lighting. So this will be a very interesting one because I haven't shown you a proper night lighting tutorial and I haven't shown you like a kind of a final composition thing. Um, you, can, you have access to all the scenes, like the Houdini scene, the Maya scene, all the shaders and all the lights if you are a patron of mine where you have access to the source files and then there is a link and you get all the access to all this stuff. Also, um, if you sign up for this Patreon uh, source materials, you have access to all the other tutorials as well. So if you're interested in recreating this and you just want to see how I did it and use my stuff, feel free to use them. It's all online. So let's head over to Maya. This is Houdini. Um, and this is where we left off. So this is the current scene um, and the ground from Houdini. And you can see there's already a light. So let's first hide this light. So we, we actually start from scratch. And currently I've got two shaders assigned as well. And I will, I will not 100% recreate them, but I will again show you all the steps I did so let's just frame this so this is the ground material and then i create another tab in here and create the igloo so this is the igloo shader and you can see it's exactly the same shader as the m2a20 i think it's 206 let's just double check yes the 206 one and i, I will not be recreating this but i created the shader in this tutorial so be sure to check this one out to so that you feel more comfortable watching this one so this is the shader it's just three um, procedurals connected together into the displacement map and it's kind of the same for the ground all these procedurals they go into a bump instead and a displacement and they create the ground shader and then i also have the lights so it's a few lights they are all used um, I have one light linking light which is responsible for this rim edge because you have kind of a mirror reflective surface here if I position a light in this location um, you will see all the specks on the ground from that light and I wanted to have artistic control to position this rim where I wanted without interfering with my beauty render so um, First off, I will show you how to create this sun. This is not an image. This is actually all done in Arnold with the physical sky. Um, so before we start, I would just want to hide all the heavy stuff, which takes a while to render. So hiding the igloos underground. So now we should have a kind of an empty scene. Yeah, we actually do have one. Okay, so... Um, I just saved it. So this is now, this would be the this, this scene for you to start. This is the training one. And I'll just save, let's just save another one. So this is the empty one and this will be the finished one. Finished, I'll just call it final. All right, so in here, um, I first want to show you how to create this so now I created the physical skylight, Arnold lights and then physical sky. And if I hit render now, you should see something interesting. This is what it is. So you can already see you get this nice gradient, you get the blue sky. And somewhere you should see a sun, which is up there. It's pretty small. So what I ended up doing, I was like um, changing the disk size and the elevation. So elevation is... Uh, from horizon to um, the nodal, I think, the top of the sphere. 
So if you have an elevation of zero, it's at the horizon. And this is kind of what I did. And I was just increasing the sun by a lot. And then turbidity is how dirty the air is, like how many particles are in the air. So if there is, if it's on zero, I think it's pretty clean. Does it actually do? Yeah, you should see almost no no light fall off but if you have a turbidity of five you should see that there's it's more dirtying up and stuff so i used kind of i think i used five as well and this azimuth or whatever however you pronounce it is the rotation around like 360 degrees so if i move this value it's rotating it's kind of rotating the sphere internally so what i was ended up doing i looked uh, ran it through my render camera and then I was rotating until I, I see it in in the frustum. So I was using this. Oh, there it is. So it's around 90. No, what was it? 60. Yeah, so 40. And you can see now this is pretty a, a pretty big sun. So I was reducing the scale. Um, let's see what I use ended up using. Yeah, I guess something like this. I moved it a bit more to the right, maybe 50. Yeah, so this is how I actually created the sky. And you can create lots of skies like this. You can create a like 12 p.m. sky or sun, and it's, it's actually working pretty good. And the only thing is you see that it's cut off where the horizon starts. So what I ended up doing was creating the ground geo and then moving it until it hit the horizon line. So if I render this now, you would see that the sun is here and you get the effect. So let's just create a standard surface shader um, with a high roughness. Uh, yeah, something like this. So I think it should not be subdividing. Let's just check subdivisions. Yeah, it's two. So I just disable or just, well, just do it for one subdivision for now. Okay, so let's render this. And now you can already see what we get. So that's that's the geometry I exported from Houdini. You can see the ridges the bumps, you see the nice sun in the background. And this could now be a desert or something like that. And what I ended up doing as well was reducing the exposure or the intensity in here. I'm not so sure. I think I reduced the exposure here. Mine is two or just to get something a bit darker. And I was also tinting the sky because now it's all red. And I wanted it to be more um, dark or bluish. So you have these tints. And I, I think I went for something blue and you can see that it's getting the sky is now being darkened down. So um can also try to darken the sun a bit and then just to bring in bring uh increase the exposure again. Let's see what this did. Yeah, so now it's a more bluish and you can see that because of the sky you get more diffuse lighting. Um is it actually on here? Well, it's hard to see. But if I bring up the exposure, you can see that the blue sky is now being reflected and you can kind of see it better. Okay, so this would be the setting up the main environment light. So I did not use an HDR, I used this physical sky, which uh, is not 100% realistic because you're missing all the clouds and stuff like that. Um, but for a quick mock-up render, like just to show you the lighting and shading, I think this is good enough. And the only thing I noticed was that the the depth of field is not really working correct. You can see that this igloo here is way more out of focus than the sun actually. And uh, the sun should be a lot more out of focus than this. So um there's no control to kind of specify the depth of the physical sky, so it's I'm not sure how that is being calculated. Anyways, um yeah for the main render camera before we continue um i have a pretty high focal length just because i wanted to have the foreground out of focus and the center object pretty sharp so this is why i used a pretty high focal length 
which I think also helps to to sell the image. Like if you if you would use a like fish eye, it would look a bit weird, in my opinion. But this is artistic, so whatever you want to do, you can do. And the next thing I did was placing the igloos. So I was first importing them um, from Houdini. Let's just uh, find the center. Yeah, so I was unhiding, uh, importing them as Alembics. So this would be Igloo 1. And if I, I think I close it down, did I? Yeah. So if I go to the main shape and tear this as, as, of a, as a copy, I always have this on my second monitor. So it's kind of floating around now. But in the perspective, I um let's just make the scale of this guy. Or oh, actually let's 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 just hide this. So what I then did was I imported or duplicated the other igloos and I was placing them. So obviously I did the placement before I um exported the ground to Houdini. So I first placed them, looked for a nice framing and yeah, you can see I wanted to have one in the background just to get a nice depth of field effect. I also actually, what I first wanted to do was to create a large circle of igloos. Um, but I I noticed that these the main one will be filling up most of the framing. So I just squashed one in here. Maybe it would be interesting to have a few on, the, on these ridges here. But anyways, this is what I ended up doing. So, and now comes, I guess, the interesting part, how I did the lighting. Um, I always do the lighting first and then I do the shading just because it's it's kind of easier or faster if you have a really basic shader to do the lighting and then you do assign the shaders or do shader tweaks and then you do lighting again. So this is kind of the workflow I did. And, and you can also see I've got already lights inside but I will hide them as well for now. And I will just... Um, unhide the sky I used here and now I start the render and I will actually dock the render move this one over and dock the render view at the bottom here okay if I can dock it it's just uh, just one second let's just Okay, let's just move. Uh, okay, so I already have the igloos in, in the render and I kind of have the shader on them already. So what I first want to do is assign the same um, surface shader I have on the ground. And let's see what we get now. Okay, so I boosted up the exposure and you can see this is what I currently have. Um, is that the same? It is the same. They looks a lot darker, interestingly, than this. Hmm. Not exactly sure why that is. Well, it's, I think it was just the angle. It's it's all good. All right. So what I so uh, what I ended up doing was creating first the um, the edge lights, which is I call them fill lights which get these nice highlights like because it's kind of round I wanted to shape them so there's this you get this effect of having a round igloo so um, without using the exposure let's just create the light uh, area light and where is it I also need to render a, s a smaller window it's just it's a lot faster this way just the navigation alone takes a bit. Okay, so now I have my area light in the top. And if I increase the exposure, let's say 15, you can see that we get the light there. So let's see if this one works now. Yeah, so this light control is a tool I developed for my light, light shaders, light shader toolbox. It's kind of a separate window where you have all your lights and you can have you directly have a navigator where you can position your lights better 
so if I make this like that and you have also the controls of each light so now you can see at the bottom left is my render view and now what I want to create is this kind of rim, rim light effect so I'm just rotating the light over and now you can see we get the nice full off and it's getting already nice and shaped so this is what I had in the render you can see it and then on I also had it on all the other shapes because this scene scale is actually pretty big I created e each uh, for each igloo and their own fill light what you can also do is create a really big one and move that around but I just ended up doing this so let's just move this guy over uh, and what I can do now is just increase the exposure a bit maybe make the light a bit smaller so we get a bit more defined shadows and yeah so I'm just trying not to light the one in the background so I will be rotating this a bit just to isolate the igloo in the background and then let's create another one let's just uh, duplicate this I keep saving just just as a precaution control D another light um, and now let's use this select a second light and move to the other igloo and now I did the same thing so I was just moving it a bit and then creating this nice ri um, rim light or edge light or just to shape it a bit more interesting what you can also do is just render region around this so this is all about efficiency so I'll turn up, uh, turn up doing that just to get a quicker render like quicker feedback yeah and I think this is pretty good you, you can see the shape you can see the specs and everything which is nice and now we have just one more uh, igloo here in the background so um, let's just duplicate this light one more time refresh the UI here and select it and then just fly to igloo number two which is actually number three and you can see now it's being lit up here in the back and I'm just trying to do the same thing it's getting more light on the ground this time yeah this is better and now you can see the nice shape of the igloo there in the back as well so this was the first step I did just to get it more interesting and now what I wanted to do is create this nice edge from the Sun like which is this really cool looking light which also gives a nice subsurface scattering look to do that I created a, another light and so now it, this is now where the tricky parts part comes in I was using a light linking just to light the igloos and not the ground but let's try to see if we can actually do it in one go so duplicating light one and looking through that and now what I want to do is I just want to render this region here and rotate the light so we kind of light only this edge something like this and obviously we want it for both so um, I just moved them back like this and then I increase the exposure for this guy let's see what we get and now you can already see that I'm getting this edge and this should be the sunlight so what I also did I was do using uh, Kelvin so I en ed enabled the Kelvin switch and I changed the value I think to 2800 or something just to get this nice warm orange look and you can see it's working already pretty good and actually for the fill lights I also use Kelvin like a kind of moonlight blue I think it's around 7000 Kelvin let's just see what we can do here enable Kelvin and go up to 75 
And you can see it gets this little blue tint. And let's just do that for the other ones as well. So if you if you don't have this, if you don't have light shaders, obviously you just enable the color temperature in the shape, change the temperature value there. So I'm just using the UI quickly. Okay, and four is the sun. Okay, so this is now, let's just render this. And this is what I currently have. And you can actually see that, well, we need to see when the shader is on here if we actually need to light link it. Um, and let's render the perspective just that you see what we did now. So this is the sun and you can already see that it is only here and the sun is kind of, you can see the sun is kind of there. So depending on the angle we need to fake it and this is what I actually did in the final render, I just faked it a bit. And you can see the sun is kind of there and all the, my rim light is here. So what I did was light linking. So I think we can just do the same thing. Just hit save. And so to do light linking, what I did, you need or what you need to do is disable this illuminates by default. And when this is toggled off, this light does not is not linked to any object. So it's actually not lighting anything. And what I did then in the I think Windows relationships, you have light linking, light centric editor which opens up to the side here for me and then you select a light and all the other lights because they are enabled by default have selected all the objects but my light 4 because I disabled the checkbox nothing is li lighting it so I'm going to um, choose only igloo detail and igloo 1 and now only those two should be lit up and you can see only those two now are lit up and the rest is being ignored and this is what I wanted to do and this is actually what I did in for the final render as well. And now in the camera, you can only see the light being affected on the igloos here and there. And the the ground is being ignored, which is actually exactly what I wanted to, to happen. So now comes the part where we add the lights for the interior. And this was actually the most simple thing to do. I just created another light and position it right inside the igloo. And because I started from the origin, the first light is kind of in the center. Uh, can't frame this now. As you can see, I'm not naming them currently because I will, I, I don't think I will render this, but I just want to show you what I did. So now I just rotated the light so it's lighting um, from the bottom to the top scale it up to get softer shadows and in the top view I just moved it inside more and depending how the how it looks like I will rotate the light to the front a bit like this okay so now it should be only lighting up the interior uh, which it which is happening yeah Alrighty, so now comes the fun part where you increase the exposure and you see something happening. So 8 is nothing, 15, okay. On 15 you can see the light is showing up. And I'm not sure if if you can actually light a fire in here, like a gas stove or something like that, or if it's just electric, I don't know. But it's it should be pretty bright, so let's just try 17. And this is now my light from the inside. Obviously, it's a white light, which is not correct. So um, I think I close it. Sometimes it's a bit buggy and you cannot reopen it, but this time we can. Um, so area light 5 is in the interior, and I just want to enable Kelvin as well. Uh, let's go for 5500, five which, uh, which is not yellow enough, in my opinion. So let's try 3.8. And this is getting kind of into the range of candlelight. Maybe try 3000. Yeah, maybe that will work. And this is the interior light. So um, let's see if I just unhide the other lights, which I actually already have in, in the igloos. I just drag them into the shape of one igloo and then it was inside there. So you can see they are here. So unhide this one. 
let's see. I guess I need to restart the render. Okay, so this is now with the interior lights. And let's check this one. Yeah, so this is currently what I have. And currently no shaders, just the um, simple standard surface shader. And you can see that the background is getting really black. So what I ended up doing as well was adding a fill light just to light up the really dark uh, horizon. So in the render, we actually see something. Um, but I kind of like the new contrast as well, which is very interesting. <coughs> All right, so now um, what I also um, did as well, I rendered with depth of field as well. As you can see, like it's out of focus in the front and in the back. And what I always do to render depth of field is go to the debug shading menu, which you can um, show if you go to toolbar icons and show debug shading icon, which actually enables the drop down menu. And then you go to basic mode. And in this mode, I'm always. Um, doing my depth of field and displacement. So looking through the render camera, I always have a little locator and I always have my objects displayed. So if you go to display, heads up display, um, enable object details, and then you always get this information of the current selection. And this locator here is the locator I'm using to focus. So wherever I put this one, I read the value or remember this value. And this is my focus, focal distance, which is 1497. And depending how you, how you, how you set up your camera, this value is very sensitive. Um, so in my render camera, in the Arnold dropdown, you got to add this focus, uh, focal distance of your locator in here and then enable depth of field. So I have it disabled in the diagnostics. So I just untick, untick this one and now you can see that I get the depth of field happening. And when I change the aperture size, the focus changes and it gets a lot more blurry. And the more you defocus your render, the more samples you need. So try to keep it realistic and not too crazy. So a value of maybe two for this one should be fine. Uh, maybe one is also okay, but let's just keep it on two. Aperture blades is the bokeh effect you get in the end. Yeah, okay. So let's head over to the hypershade to assign the shaders. And as I said, these shaders are exactly the ones I used in the M2A206 uh, material series tutorial. Obviously, I tweaked it a bit for the shot, but kind of they would just work like plug and play. Um, so what I did here, uh, I have the igloos and let's just assign the shader and you can actually see, I just imported this from that tutorial M2A206. Uh, let's just stop the render and assign this guy. So now the shader is assigned. Let's just retranslate the scene. We're still in basic mode, so let's just switch to shading and hit the play button. And now you can see that we actually get the correct shader assigned. The ground has still the standard surface shader, but already now you can see the nice bleeding effect of the lights. So I'm rendering in a really small resolution. You can see it's 480 by 270. and I actually do this quite a lot just to speed up the whole process of lighting. It's just way more efficient if you have a small resolution. It's very interactive. And then the more you go to your final images, the more you increase your render resolution. So uh, let's go up to 75%, which is 1K, I think, uh, which is 1400 by 800. And then what I also do is I just render regions as well, just to keep it nice and snappy. And you can see now that um, how the depth of uh, like how the scattering works, and especially on these areas, you can really see the nice transmission. Like, and then if you go to the proper AOVs as well, 
you can see the bleeding like how the light goes through the surface and in the indirect as well it's a very cool effect and to get AOVs you uh, create them in your render globals under AOVs and then you select the ones you want to uh, create quick click this arrow and then it will be on the right hand side and then accessible from the render view all right so um, obviously then comes the part where you fine-tune your shaders and your lights and your samples and to do so um, first what I always do like if I like um, if I don't like the expo uh, the subsurface transmission depth I go here in the shader under subsurface and I just change the scale um, I fine-tuned this already for this tutorial but the default is one and you can see on, on one there's not really much happening you kind of see the light bleeding through these really thin parts um, but I wanted to have it more just to kind of resemble the references I got online and you can see that it is very translucent so um, that's why I increased the scale to 2.5 I think or let's just 3 and then you can see how the effect looks and for all these shaded tweaks and tests what I ended up doing was disabling the depth of field so I always see the crisp render and let's render this in the back and you can see how it's working and you can see the light bleeding through these little ridges and I think it works pretty pretty good and also the Houdini stuff where you can see where I extracted these little spheres and merge them together and it all comes it all ties in very nicely together and yeah for the shader I have this back and a coat just to get these little glints which you see here and if you if you go through the AOVs you can see them pretty nicely code direct you can see these glints there and this is because I have a code which is very um, has a pretty sharp roughness and for the ground I assigned the same shader or the same but a little bit tweaked shader so let's assign that one as well uh, and assign this what I mean by tweaked I checked the noise sizes let's just uh, retranslate and I'll show you what I mean and for this tutorial I, I change them from object to world so I always have the same size of noise on each of each like um, objects for the ground so now I have isolate selected enabled and you can see I have increased the noises so this is my mid frequency this is my low and this is the high which gives me these glints tied in together and they go into this placement and if I go to basic, you can see um, what is happening in here. You can see that there is now these bumps everywhere and obviously it's not subdivided enough. So what I did for the final render, I went to Arnold tab and I subdivided. I think I was ended, ending up using two or three. Um, so we get higher detail. So this is now on two and you can see you immediately get more bumps and in, uh, in detail for that. And you can also use the lighting drop down here. This is actually what I also use just to dial in the lights better. This is assigns a default Lambert shader and then you can do the lighting. Instead of assigning a Lambert manually, you can actually use the lighting tab and do lighting in here and then switch to, to shading, which is your render. so now I actually I think I have more spec in here so this is actually a bit stronger intensity than I had it before so let's try to increase the exposure for this guy which actually brightens up the environment as well and you get more detail in those darker spots so let's see what we get now obviously it's a bit brighter now but it does help you get the spec better and this is kind of how I set the whole thing up it was like the idea was um, actually my girlfriend 
um, told me like I was telling her yeah I'm doing a snow shader and sh she said yeah why don't you do an igloo and she actually wanted to add me like little polar bears and coke bottles and stuff like that but uh, that that was a bit too much I guess um, yeah but this is the tutorial and in the end um, to get this clean render it rendered quite a bit I think it rendered like 40, 40 minutes or something um, because I wanted it to be noise free or kind of noise free and let's just go through the passes um, and I can show you uh, layer selector so the SSS direct this is my SSS pass um, which is pretty clean I must say and it looks pretty neat like really soft and fluffy I guess and then let's go to the indirect which is this guy I'm exposing up currently so and you really can see the nice bleeding effect which is very awesome and then the spec direct uh, so that's the spec direct and you can see like it, it obviously it might be a bit too strong and if you if you would do it for production or any clients you would kind of run out these passes and also light AUVs and uh, do some compositing in Nuke for sure um, yeah but I just kind of did it all in Arnold just to show you what can be done um, and for final render settings, as you can see, this looks ex actually also pretty cool with the different lighting. Like, it, we got a bit more spec on this. So for final render settings, what I first did, I um, I rendered again just a little region like this. And I went to Render Globals and enabled Depth of Field. And I was changing my resolution to 100%. And then I was checking where things are out of focus a lot, like this, especially here where there's light. And then I wanted to get this clean. So you can see this is now pretty noisy with my current settings. It's four SSS samples and four AA, and a three diffuse bounces and two spec bounces. So what I always do, like I disable all the stuff up here and then I see if it's still noisy, I know it is the camera AI samples which need to be increased. Um, also make sure your lights have samples. If it's on one, it's, it gets really noisy and you need a high AI samples to resolve that. So either use two or three samples for your lights and also for the dome lights, which has three for this case. And if you use depth of field, you need to crank up your AA samples by quite a bit. So if, even if you go to six, you see significant noise in here. Uh, let's try 12. And now you can slowly see that it's getting softer and smoother. Obviously, there is still some noise. If I zoom in here by 300%, uh, you can see it's still noisy. Um, and if you change to basic you can see that the depth of field though is almost clean so let's just do 14 AI samples it might sound a lot it is a lot but just this is now where experience comes in if you have high AI samples you should be very careful setting those values here and that's what I also said in the lights have two or three samples because if you go up higher than three and you use a, a higher AI samples it all gets multiplied and gets really heavy quickly but anyways on uh, AA14 you can see the depth of field is pretty clean now so if I head back to shading um, this is now what we get it's still noisy unfortunately um, this is the direct spec I think yeah which is the noisy because we don't have indirects currently uh, should be black yeah so yeah you can't really get this cleaner and i think this is kind of because we have this roughness onto on the on the shader so this is where it all ties in in the end let's see how this one looks and i think this one is will also look kind of noisy just because we have this bump map and as you can see uh it's not really a noise it's just the detail of the surface and i think this is the same which is happening there in the back so this is pretty good so um, th this would be now my A samples. And then what I do, I go to the diffuse 
Um, I can't, I, because it's fully SSS in this scene, I don't have the fuse, so you can actually leave it on zero. But just for the sake of it, leave it on one. Or put it on one. Or let's just first check the diffuse direct if there is actually anything. And I don't think so. So you, you can actually leave. If you don't have the fuse, leave it off. But this is a rare case. I think you never have fully scenes which have fully um, or only scattering. So keep this on one. So now let's bring an in indirect spec. One sample. So now we should see some indirect specs as well. There we go. And this pa uh, pass is quite frequently very noisy. So especially if you have like very shiny objects which are uh, sh um, reflecting each other, the spec indirects get noisy quite a bit. Uh, now you can see that the indirect is resolving and it's actually pretty clean, which is good. So we don't need to go higher than one for this. I'm increasing the exposure by three stops and it's more or less still very clean. So 1411 is very good for this. And now the the really killer render time killer is the SSS. So I'll just select this small region here, head over to SSS direct and increase this by one, which should render the scattering. So this is always how I do um, my noise sampling. So I start from the top, turning everything off and then slowly bringing values in and changing them until they are clean. And you can see that the SSS is very noisy, especially here in the back. So, oh, we are, and we just keep in mind, we are on three stops up. So this is actually what we get. But still, this is also very noisy in the diffuse and uh, the SSS direct. So let's try two, just to see if we can get the direct cleaner. Yeah, this helped already a lot. And then you need to see the indirect, which are also very noisy. So this is currently the indirect. So it is also quite noisy. If you check my final render, SSS indirect, um, this one is very clean or not very clean but c pretty clean so it's not it's not that yet so i think i my and i ended up having four in here which is very high so this is where the 50 minute render time comes in and obviously i have three diffuse bounces but you need that for these uh, translucent scenes because you want the light to scatter and bounce a lot so I, I think you should have at least three bounces for this kind of stuff. Yeah, so now you can see this is uh, pretty clean now, especially if, if you check on, uh, on the default exposure stop. And now let's check the beauty render. If I click it correct. So this is now, how you can see that this is very clean and it might be a bit too clean, like it's, well, it's never too clean, but for this sake, for the render time, um, this might be a bit overkill. So what I ended up doing, I just reduced the AA samples to maybe 11 or 12, just to get it a bit faster. And yeah, then you should be fine. But if you want, if you have like a production or a commercial, obviously you need to have clean renders. So it's good to crank up these values in the end but you should never render like 14, four or something. This would be like render forever. Like this is crazy, 14, four is a lot. So, but for SSS, I hope uh, solid angle works a bit more to get rid of the noise in there to just clean it up a bit more. Yeah, so if you follow along, as I said, I provide you the full scene. You can see what I did here and yeah recreate this use your own lights use your different objects or whatever you ch change the stuff in houdini um, you can do whatever you want to do in there so um, again this is the final render for my test render and if i reset the exposure so this is what i got and I hope you did enjoy this. And obviously this was a kind of a different way of doing tutorials. I was just re 
kind of redoing the steps I did before and just explaining what I did and why I did it. So you did not see me actually solve the process as well I go. Um, I hope it, this is still okay and you learned something on the way I work, how I set up lights, how I debug scenes and just to make things look more interesting, especially of shaping objects using rim lights, fill lights, creating interesting edges and all that stuff helps you create a very interesting result and also the framing you can see that my horizon is in the um, um, third quarter uh, third quarter and the upper third that's what I wanted to say and my um, look at point my interesting point is kind of in the low, lower third and kind of on the left is the focus point so your eye is actually automatically drawn there and you can see that from the sun towards these there's like a diagonal line um, pushing your focus to this area so this is all of these things I think of when I do uh, my scene compositions and my layout um, yeah thanks again for tuning in and if you have not done so please subscribe to my channel um, I, I would really appreciate that especially if you can hit the my milestone 20,000 followers which is a big step for me and um, if you want to scene files visit patreon.com go to my channel on patreon and also um, please leave a comment below ask questions and i'm happy to help you guys out thanks for tuning in and happy rendering